You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, God damn it! Get the point. Good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. I'm having a good time. Not necessarily dragging the line, but hey, it is a Freaker Friday. Yeah, Tommy James. Ah, gotta love it. Gotta love it. Yeah, Tom, uh, was that Tommy James on the Shondells? Hell, I don't know. It just says Tommy James on my little thing. <laughs> Hi, y'all. It's a Freaker Friday, and you got Grammy Mary here. And I was singing along with that song and having a good time, too. Um, yeah, I am so ready for the weekend, although I don't really know that a weekend makes a whole hell of a lot of difference for me anymore. Other than, well, my kids are off so that they can either come visit or I can go visit them and actually spend time with them. But other than that, you know, weekends are weekends are weekends are weekends. So, okay, I got to check something out because my volume went like, what the hell? What the hell? And where did it go? Oh, my Dell volume thingy disappeared. What the hell? Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll just do this. Let me check this. Let me see if I can do. Because I noticed it the other day when I was doing, and I was like, what the heck? Okay, it was working really good. And the volume was high and all that. And yeah, well, I'm looking at my little bar graph. Squirrel! (laughs) And it's like, what the heck? What the heck? And yeah, once I fixed my, yeah, kind of sort of fixed, got things, yeah. Now it's, I have a few things I still need to tweak on my computer. Let's just put it that way, shall we? I think we shall. Maybe that's, maybe I need to turn my microphone. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Ooh, that was weird. Okay. Hi. (laughs) You get what you pay for. And seeing as how this ain't costing you nothing. (laughs) Yeah. What was I saying? Set for your ears being abused and your time. So, eh, what the hey? It's Friday. It's frickin' Freaker Friday is what it is. And I have been squirrel all day long. So, and sharing recipes with people. Been getting texts right and left. And how do you make and how do you do? And so, yeah, it's been one of those days. And then I squirreled out in the yard. So just a warning right off the bat. If I start sneezing or something, yeah, tis the season to because it's pollinating outside. And I've been pulling weeds (laughs) in the garden again. And yeah, which means my head is right down there by all that pollen. Oh, joy. Oh, bliss. So if I sneeze, yeah, that's why. I've been playing in the plants again. (laughs) Oh, well, let's see. What else did I do today? Oh, yeah. Um, um, my farmer's granddaughters really, really like a shrug that I made for their mommy. And so I'm also, you know, when it's too hot to be outside, I'm inside knitting. I know. Go crazy. It's like, yeah, I'm a Grammy. I'm either out in the yard. You know, those, those yard signs. I don't know if everybody sees them or not, but there's yard signs, at least out in this neck of the woods, where it looks like a lady's wearing a pokey dot dress and she's bent over and you see the bloomers hanging out and everything. That's pretty much the position I assume in the yard. (laughs) And if I ain't doing that, I'm either inside cooking or I'm knitting or I'm running somewhere. So I stay plenty busy. But I didn't really have a whole hell of a lot of time to look up stuff today. So we're winging it tonight. We're winging it. I've seen a few things on Twitter. And speaking of Twitter, thank you, Barman, for tweeting me out. I truly do appreciate it. I also saw Gary L. was over here. Hi, Gary L. How's life treating you? I gained another stalker. Booyah! So how much do dental implants... Oh, those look painful. Ow. Put a freaking bolt in the bone and then screw it. Ow. That looks painful. I don't think I want to go there. That's a 
Marlon Phillips shared something about dental implants on Twitter. And it makes my jaw hurt just looking at it because they're, you know, lower. Ow. I used to work at a dentist office, so, yeah, and I assisted with some of that stuff. Oh, my God, please, people, take care. If you ever have to have a tooth pull, please take care of that because dry sockets are painful for you, and they're nasty for the rest of us to have to deal with, okay? So, yeah, take care of your teeth. Coconut oil. Okay, I got I to gotta retweet because Barman, being ever so efficient, just tweeted that I'm live. Um live and rambling because <laughs> it's what I do so um oh and be obnoxious apparently I'm obnoxious as well of course you know if I got to do something I may as well do it upright right so barman is over here Gary L is over here let's see who else is over here um that's pretty much it the Donald is doing stuff but eh, who gives a shit about him who gives a shite Hi, Gary L. Miracle Spray. You got Miracle Spray. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I knew it was Tommy James, but I didn't know if it was Tommy James and the Shondells yet or not. But, yeah, I like that song, and I was singing along. Yeah, and there's a reason why I don't have my mic turned on when I'm doing that. <laughs> I have a tendency to hit a wrong note every once in a while. I, I have a tendency to do that when I'm reading, too. Kind of pisses people off, but that's okay. That, um, what? Oh, Meister Brower's yelling about toilet paper. Whatever. Meister, you are so goofy, and I love you. Okay, now I've said hey to everybody over on Twitter. Let me go say hey to everybody over on that effing site. Hi, everybody on that effing site, and thank you ever so much, Grimmy, for sharing it out. I was over here earlier and kind of scrolling and snooping, and I noticed, and I saw a little thing off to the side that said Grim had commented on, hey, buddy, got a light. And I, I honest to God, forgot I wrote that. <laughs> But I read it, and it was like, yeah, it looks like something I'd write. <laughs> it's kind of fun, though. And, yeah, I still feel that way. I don't want no leader. I don't want no ruler. Unless, you know, it's got, like, a scale on it, inches, a foot, a yard, you know, that kind of ruler. Any other kind, I ain't got, n I don't want nothing to do with it. Nothing. Okay. Jeez, oh, Pete. Remember me. Remember? Yeah, I had to re-log in to the effing site. Apparently, I got somewhat distracted. <laughs> Shock. Shock. <laughs> Once again, over here on the effing site, thank you, Grimner, for sharing it out. I really appreciate it. I don't see anybody else. Well, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Lady in is here. Hi, sweetheart. And uh, Loki Luck 3 and Katie Troxel were over here earlier. And Katie, I do, yeah, that Costco thing. Yeah. Yeah, you do. You got to show more idea to damn library to take out a library card than you do to vote anymore. Kind of crazy. Got to show more idea to get a library card. But. Uh, see, that just goes to show that the whole system is just a mess, and it's designed to be a mess. It's designed to keep you running in circles. It's turning us all into wheels, and you know what a wheel is? A wheel is, you know, something that it goes around in circles and never gets anything done. Or, you know, like you're standing there and someone nailed one foot to the floor, and so all you can do is run in circles. Yeah, that's pretty much what they're trying to do to us. So, just get yourself a hammer. Pry that. I know it hurts. I know it hurts. Don't worry about getting a damn tetanus shot. I know they try and push those damn things too, but nah. If you're eating right, you really shouldn't need one. Some people will still need them because, you know, their immune system is compromised. But most people, mm. in any case, pull that nail out and run. Run, Forrest, run. Get the hell away from all them control freaks because you don't need that shit. You don't. Okay, where am I at? Gab. Gab. I saw something really cute over on Gab, too, and I just plain cannot, uh, I didn't share anything over there, but I'm, I'm, I go there and I check it at least once a day, just to check it out, and I found something rather cute that I will get to here in a little bit, basically because, uh, once again, I didn't have doodly shit lined up, so, 
<laughs> um, over here on Mines. Hi, Mines. Oh, there's Mud. Hi, Mud. Is your name Mud? <laughs> I don't see anything else. Thank you, RLM, for uh, sharing over there on Mines. I, too, reminded it. It's Mines is a crazy kind of place. Very, 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 um, wow, you have to, I don't know what you have to do in order to, but it's very crazy, and lots of people posting stuff, and, <clears throat> excuse me, I haven't seen a whole hell of a lot of, um, conversations as yet. Yeah, I have seen that as well. Hmm. Okay. So, over on Fakie Book. Thank you once again, Gary L., for sharing that over on Fakie Book. And uh, Ross just shared this. I swear some people must have been conceived through anal sex because there's no way you can be that much of an asshole naturally. Uh, you know, I know people like that, too. Okay, where do I want to go first? After, you know what? I know where I still need to go because, yeah... I didn't tell anybody where you're listening because y'all already know. Because <laughs> if you don't, then you ain't listening. So, but over here in the RLM, which is where you need to be if you want to give me static. Smells really good there, Meister Brow. That's awesome. I'm glad it smells good there. Some booty quit. And Rob Works fired up the bubbler. Booyah! So, right up top, I see Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. I say that every time because it's true. And if you repeat the truth often enough, maybe, just maybe, someone will go, hey, that's true. You know, as opposed to repeat a lie often enough and everybody will go, well, they keep saying it, so it must be true. Ba-dum-bum-bum. Hi, Grimmy. Grimmy's the RLM god. He knows everything. And if he don't know it, he's got Google or DuckDuckGo or something. He can find it. He has people. They might be Borgian, bot, bot Borg people, but he's got people. And he can find shit. Watch it. Moose Girl is here. Hey, Moosey. Grimmy and Moose Girl are going to be on later on this evening for the Freakers Ball. Yay. Good time had by all. Climate change. No such critter. At least not the way they mean it. That's once again. They take normal everyday words and they take our understanding of it and they put it in a completely different context. So we take that understanding along with it, not realizing that when you really stop and think about it, climate changes. That's what it does. It is designed to do that, which is another one of those really weird things because they say the sun, uh, our hottest months in the northern hemisphere are when the earth is the farthest away from the sun, and yet the sun is the reason why we're so warm and cool. And our coldest months are when we, were, we are closer to the sun. I, hmm, that's true, Meister Brow. It does smell does beat smelling like ass although I don't very often go around smelling ass but that's okay it's okay <laughs> squirrel hi Kate Kate has been in overachiever mode when it comes to bot kicking boo ya bot kicking Kate is the bot kicking fool that's what she is she ain't no fool kicking bots. She's a bot kicking fool. And I'm thinking she's going to have one leg that's like an Arnold Schwarzenegger leg and the other leg is like a normal leg. Kate, you need to learn to switch legs. Okay? And yeah, I know, Meister Brower. I know. You, you do realize that there is a lie in the middle of believes. Right there, right in the middle. Lie can't spell believe without having a lie in there okay asmo hi asmo how you doing i also see the lovely beth z is here as well as chalsa denis cycles is still logged in and chloe is here dogs do yeah i know dogs like smelling ass that's how they say hi and they find out you know if you're okay or not if they can come around smell your ass then there's something wrong with you <laughs> oh 
I'm having fun responding to... Yes, Grim, she will kick your bot. Um, I'm responding to the chit chat. So I'm sure there's, you know, because there's a bit of a delay because I got crap internet. And so it's like at least a 30 second delay, I'm thinking. So it's kind of fun. <laughs> yes, Frumpy, it is. It is. Okay. Uh, mm, Chloe, yeah. Colfax 101. Yeah, that's that street out there in Denver where you can get just about anything. Cyborg Noodle. That's another bot, but it's a noodly bot, so it must be good from the Flying Spaghetti Monster. That Maybe that's the Flying Spaghetti Monster bot. And Friday is Apostopharian Holy Day. Arg, Speak like a pirate. Do you know they have beer volcanoes in Apostopharian heaven? Um... I could. You know what, Grim? Actually, right now, I'm running Hex Chat because when I did all that stuff with my computer and then I wound up breaking down and doing the last good and so I don't have um, add I, add e -I -R -C -A -D -I -I -R -C. I, I have that on my other computer, but not on this one. This one, I have Hex Chat. And I figure the computer's running fine. I'm not fucking with it. Oh, F-bomb. So early in the show. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, yes, uh, Meister Brower. I, honey, it's not stupid for me. Sometimes I have to climb a ladder to get there. <laughs> I am short, don't you know? In any case... Um, dun, dun, dun. I don't want, I don't want the power. I don't want no power. <laughs> I do have a rocket chair. I blast somebody's ass with this. Oh no, that's my fuel. Never mind. Moving along. Cyborg Noodle. Don underscore C, or actually D underscore C. I know, I know who this is, and so therefore I... <laughs> Hi, Dakota, and Echelon, and Frumpy. Frumpy, what are you doing, Meister Brown? Gonna smoke a piece of pineapple on a big chunk of watermelon. Oh, okay. Pineapple's very good for you. Very good for your throat. Have a sore throat or something like that. Yeah, pineapple juice is excellent. Get real pineapple juice. Don't get that other nasty shit. Not with all that high fructose corn syrup or yada, 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 yada. Oh, okay. No worries, Grim. I don't, I don't want the power. I, no. I don't want it. <laughs> I have fun just sitting back and poking fun. Or reading and going, yoinks. Wow, they went there. Okay, well, I'm just going to sit back and watch. I'm good at that. Lurker. Lurker. Okay, I was at Frumpy, wasn't I? Hi, Frumpy! Gary L is here! Yay! Gary L, give big hugs to Gigi Boo for me, please. She's such a lovely lady. I'm here, okay, kind of, sort of, physically. Okay, I'm showing up in the chat. I be Don C is here, as well as Java, 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 Dr. Two JJs from Scotland is here. Juana Taco, and you know what? I didn't have leftover tacos the other day so I may have to do that tonight because I still have taco meat hmm what are my doggies barking at I don't know if you could hear them but I could hear them um okay yeah da, 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 da. oh what Alice Smith now I'm gonna have to check that out some booty just joined us back in Okay, where was I at? Kozu, that's where I'm at. And Meister Brower, Woody, Woody, how you doing, Woody? How's the new digs? I hope everything's going well for you. Moy, 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 moy is here, as well as Peace Guy. And now for the pox. We have a pox box and poxified and poxophone and pox a home going on. Lots of poxes going on. Uh, what? Pass it to me and I could, okay. Only thing is, some people have issues when... Oh, okay. Okay. I need... You know what? That's another one of those things. If I didn't squirrel so damn often, I would be able to check out some of this other shit. But, yeah, I squirrel so much, and I really need to get Linux loaded on that other computer. Of course, I have another one I'm rebuilding, too, that I need to finish that as well. 
Moving along, saying hi. I just squirrel a lot. Pompo Pond Sauce. Hi, Pond Sauce. The lovely rain. Hi, rain. How are you doing? RLM Fluke, the Vanna White of the RLM channel. Rob Works, who has already fired up the bubbler, and I truly do appreciate the cybernetic puff puff pass. Sock Puppet. Hi, Sock. How you doing, hun? Skittle, the f bombinator is here. Some booty just jumped in, and I see trust no one or number one. Trust number one is here. Um. Ooh, that's not cool, poxified. Unless that's what you meant to do. Because <laughs> sometimes, you know, it's one of those. One of those things where, wow, that really sucks. Well, does it really? And then you go down there. Wow, that's really pretty good. But does it really? Spam words. Spam words. Oh. Okay. And finally, the last, the not the last, and definitely not least, the one, the only, the phantom of the chat, who is really rather phantomish because he rarely chit-chats over here. Just kind of loiters. Kind of like... Uh, Chalcedony. Don't see Chalcedony chit chat very often either. But let's see. And is there a whole hell of a lot? Nope, not a whole hell of a lot going on over in the. Oh, talking about Annie Coulter and stuff over in the Red Pill. Okay, cool beans. So, where do I want to go first? Hmm. Because I, you know, I got to looking and I thought, man, I don't have doodly shit for tonight. And I really don't feel like scrolling and trolling and trying to find anything. And then I looked in my pocket and I went, oh, I wonder what it has recommended. And you know, there's some really cool stuff in there. But, <clears throat> excuse me, I did a little bit of a squirrel over on Twitter, which took me to a Fox link faux news which when I got to the bottom of that because yes I scrolled down so it's like oh no mm, no I uh, found that it was originally posted on page six so I went over there because I thought okay we're gonna do this and we're not gonna do the the whole um faux news thing so you know start off with something that kind of give you a little boost maybe or some of you may just say who gives a shit but this is from, um, no, wrong one. Let me click on this one. This is from page6.com. Why Jessica Alba stopped being okay with just being the face of honest.co or honestco, <clears throat> not honest.co. So, Jessica Alba has always been at the top of her health-minded and eco-friendly company, Honest Co., but most people didn't know that until recently because I partnered with a guy who created the business model. Everyone thought that it was his business idea and that I was like the face of the company and that I just got like a little percentage. Well, they didn't understand that it was the other way around. The 37-year-old who founded the all-natural baby beauty and home products business in 2011 told the story of how an allergic reaction to a cleaning product while pregnant with her first child sparked the idea of a multi-million dollar company. And see, that was, that was what got me, because it was like, booyah, all right, you know, and people do, some people will take it to that next step, but there's an awful lot of people that they have those allergic reactions and they don't make that connection because they don't realize that you're using all of these cleaning products and you're walking around barefoot in your house and the residue from that stuff is being absorbed up through your feet. And so, yeah, they don't realize that it could be that that is causing all of these other symptoms that you're having that you go to the doctor and the doctor just gives you another pill for. So booyah to her for making that connection. And then... Coming up with products, I've never tried them, but hey, you know, I may have to check it out just to see. So, it goes on to say, for a long time, I was fine with it, she said, of receiving less recognition than her business partner. Partner it was like, I don't really care, give me the money, which, okay, that was the point where I went, mm, sweetheart, 
you should be in this for the health of everyone else and the money is like just the bonus round thing. She goes on to say, I didn't realize until probably three years ago how important it is for women to see someone like me. And she explained that before elaborating on her childhood, her hardworking parents, and finding success in Hollywood. I had everyone telling me, there's no way you're going to be successful. And I just freaking pushed through and made it happen. I think that representation as a business leader now is just as important as it was in entertainment and I didn't realize that until three years ago. Jessica also announced the winner of a business pitch competition who was awarded $50,000 in marketing towards their company. And so I thought that was kind of cool. It was just one of those things that caught my eye and I thought, okay, you know what? Not all of them are you know, just these people that are out there, they, they are people, you know, and they have kids and they have problems and uh, some of them actually do something about it and some of them have people that do something for them and they just follow along with the herd. You know, they keep making money and saying, I have money, I have houses, I have cars. I don't care. I don't care. You can have all kind of shit. But if you're not healthy, what good does it do you to have all of that shit? Because you're not going to get to keep it for long. Because once you die, someone else gets to play with your toys. It's just the way it works. So, I like this. I, don't ask me why. I just liked it. And she is a pretty little thing. So, okay. What? The mouse versus the python. What the hell is that? I don't know that I want to know. Faux news. That's right. It is faux news. Okay. So, now that I've done that one, I am going to go to one that Gary L. shared over on Twitter. It's from abc7news.com. And I got to go here because it's like, booyah. I know it's one small step, but it's still, you know, just getting that first step is usually the hardest part. So jury rules Monsanto liable in weed killer case. Booyah. In San Francisco, the jury found in favor of Dwayne Lee Johnson on all claims against Monsatan as it relates to the product Roundup Pro and Ranger Pro and awarded him $250 million in punitive damages. Now, the 37-year-old Dwayne Lee Johnson filed a civil suit against the pesticide manufacturer and Johnson's attorneys say that he was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma after spraying Roundup weed killer for two and a half years. Monsatan released a statement regarding Friday's verdict. We are sympathetic to Mr. Johnson and his family. Today's decision does not change the fact that there are more than 800 scientific studies and reviews and conclusions by the U.S. Environment Protection Agency, the U.S. National Institutes of Health, and regulatory authorities around the world support the fact that glyphosate does not cause cancer and did not cause Mr. Johnson's cancer. We appeal this decision and continue to vigorously defend this product, which has a 40-year history of safety use and con continues to be vital, effective, and safe tool for farmers and others. Yes, that's their official statement. Sure, they're sympathetic. Gosh, we're really sorry that, that you didn't die before this made it to court. And yeah, 800 scientific studies. Uh-huh. How many of those were funded by you? or subsidiaries of you? How many of those were had creative data picking going on? 
how many uh, officials in the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency got their palms greased or their backsides greased, however you guys play, or the U.S. National Institutes of Health. Well, we all know that NIH, oh yeah, they're so honest. Uh-huh. Yeah, and oh, other regulatory authorities around the world. Yeah, once again, palm greasing or ass greasing, however you want to look at it. No, don't believe it. Y'all paid some shit, and now your shit is coming back to bite you. I know lots of farmers out here that refuse to use it anymore simply because they are having health issues, and that is something that they all have in common you know because where they live um, lifestyles what have you that's the only thing that they have in common <coughs> so yeah oh cycles left later cycles have a lovely evening and yeah Kate he probably will die during the appeal but hey a precedent has been set. And in this system, a lot of times that's what you have to do. Get that precedent set. You can build on that. How else do you think they do all this other shit? They did that. Um, you know, those, whoever they are, that amorphous, foggy, nasty as shit. They set precedents so that they could have their way and start tweaking things their direction. It's called building on a lie. It's shaky footing, but it happens. It happens. It has been happening for quite some time. So it's really not a surprise. And yeah, I know he's not going to live to collect that money unless he goes to like Mexico or someplace like that and gets some real treatment. You know, like some B17 or something like that for his cancer. Because yeah, in the U.S. you can't do real things all you can do is the accepted treatment yeah you know the uh, consensus is the accepted treatment is well you know those are accepted because that's part of the plan we know or at least some of us know and we ain't putting up with it we ain't going that route row 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 your boat shit lay down shit creek which is where we're going, is down Shet Creek, but hey, bobbing for floaters <laughs> with your oars. Smack them. Smack them. Okay, I'm sharing this over on the effing site and kind of, sort of. <sighs> cool beans. Cool beans. Okay, I need to do, yeah. Uh, I had someone, actually, my neighbor across the road, um, I was chatting with her last night, and uh, she wanted to know, you know, why I'm always out pulling weed. She said, why don't you just go and get, and I said, I don't spray. Number one, I don't want that crap on me, and I don't want it on my pets. I don't spray. I will pull the weeds, and I will just get them. Once I get them under control, then I will try and keep them under control, but I ain't spraying. You know, and if I do spray, it's going to be Dawn dish soap and vinegar. And another one that I learned was uh, salt and put lemon juice in there. You know, like the juice of two lemons, which is very acidic, along with the vinegar and the, the Dawn, which breaks down the wax coating on the leaves so that it will actually get into the plant. So it's like, ah, but you have to be very careful. It's a spot treat. It's not a spray the whole yard because if you spray the whole yard, you kill the whole yard. It's a spot treat. But once you get it manageable, then mix yourself up a batch of that and spot treat. And it's not harmful to the environment. So that's how I do shit. And you know, I really have, especially all this driving I've been doing lately, seeing a lot more signs posted by corn fields and milo fields and alfalfa fields and um, hay fields and even a couple of soybean fields. Not herbicide tolerant. 
which means it is not Roundup ready. Farmers are moving away from at least out in my little neck of the woods. So that's a booyah bonus point as far as I'm concerned. Okay, let me go take a peek at Twitter real quick. See if there's anything on there that I just plain can't live without knowing. Celebrate your favorite Hershey's classic. No. Sorry. Um, oh, hey, Truth or UFO just shared something. A little bit of perspective here. The U.S. is responsible for just 0.6% of plastic waste in the ocean. And straws make up just 0.02% of plastic waste in the United States. And yet, straws are bad. Straws are bad. Single use plastic is bad. Well, I recycle all that shit. I use it and use it and use it until it just finally gives up the ghost. So, thank you, Truth or UFO. That's pretty cool. Apparently, Asia does 64.9%. Africa does 164 Where in the hell are they getting these numbers from? And the rest of the world is 8.1%, whereas the U.S. is 0.6%. Hmm. Hmm. My baloney has a first name. It's O-S-C-A-R. I see an Oscar Mayer ad on Twitter. I'm starting to see a lot more of those, too. And it's like, wow, where in the hell these things come from? Okay. Bye-bye, Twitter. Enough for you. Now, I'm going to go back to my pocket because I did see some really cool stuff in there um, that I think I would like to get to. Yeah. Some rather interesting things. Uh, so, where'd you go? Where'd it go? Don't tell me you refreshed and now it's not there. Because I really, really, I should have clicked on it. Um, son of a bitch, I should have. Because I'm not seeing it. Where'd it go? Damn it. Damn it. We made Aaron Rodgers NFL Commissioner of the Day. Big whoop de doo I'm scrolling, by the way. Um, what? Let's see. I'm going to scroll slower so I can see. Designing the death of a plastic. Come on. I know it was in here. I should have just clicked on it and had it open. Um, where was that? Should have saved it, if nothing else. Uh, da, 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 cause yeah, when I refreshed, it was like, well, who the? I don't give a shit about Elon Musk. I really don't. Um. Damn it. I don't even remember the... Oh, yeah. Because it was a snarky one. Hmm. Inc.com. Lifehacker.com. How to order your Whole Foods groceries for pickup. Oh, if you're an Amazon Prime member. Nah. Okay. Maybe I just have to really scroll way down. Um, scientists claim to have solved the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. Who cares, except for those that disappeared? And do they really care? I don't think so. Um, no? It was somebody's blog spot, and it's like, son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. I really wanted to read that. Um, damn it. Why did you have to do that to me, Pocket? I really wanted to, <laughs> and I just didn't click. See, this is what happens when you don't push a button, and you really should have. I'm famous for pushing buttons, and this time I didn't, and damn it. So, it's never too late to be a reader again. That is true. Hmm. 
Uh-huh. California burning. Yes, it is. And you can't tell me that that's a natural wildfire. Somebody else did that shit. <sighs> Damn it. Well, let me see. Where was that at? <laughs> this is from wired.com. And then I will go back to my pocket and say, damn it, you sons of bitches. That was not what I wanted. You POSs. Of course, I have another one here that I did want. So, and it was actually shared by a former co-worker over on Picky Book. So... Nope. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it, Bones. Hmm. Mm hmm. And very cranky. But I will survive. Okay, this is from Wired.com, and it's never too late to be a reader again. Which, no, it isn't. It was a book that drove me away from books. This wasn't a trauma of distaste or in indulgence, not a literary bad muscle or muscle or whatever the hell that is, not waking up on the floor of someone's house with a swimming head and the knowledge that I could never again be with s within smelling distance of their first editions. My aversion was born of fear. Really? The fear took root in 2016, which, while decidedly not great in general, <coughs> excuse me, was very much a great year for books, especially fiction. Especially, especially speculative fiction. You know, between the new releases and neoclassics, I finally got around to reading American Gods, not to mention the Wired Book Club, and the year remains the most consistently pleasant span on my otherwise dusty and shame-ridden Goodreads page. I don't go to Goodreads anymore. The books were an escape, and early in the year, I'd been fortunate enough to get the opportunity to write a book of my own, and responded by getting as far away from the project as possible, diving into imaginary words as though I could take up residence there. Knowing the task that I faced, and keen desire to avoid it, you'd think I'd be able to find a balance. Well, you'd think that once I'd settled into some sort of writing routine, that groove would accommodate pleasure. Nah, not so much, as it turns out. Instead, books became daunting, and I'd started a novel, and my focus would atrophy almost immediately. I'd get 100 pages in, or 60, or 20, and put it to the side. And the reason was never dislike, but rather a host of other culprits. Seeing a published book, I'd remember that I wasn't finished and that I'd never be finished. I was consumed with the idea that I'd be intimidated by someone else's gift, that I'd subconsciously mimic another's voice. These weren't rational concerns so much as they were whispers of pettiness and self-doubt the same ones that haunt us all in tiny ways. Still, their smaller voices massed into a choir that outsang any note a book could strike. So what made this sadder still was I was working on a nonfiction book. Novels should have been a DMZ for my insecurities, not an incubator. But that was how 2016 ended. And that's how 2017 passed. And that's how 2018 began. But somewhere along the way, I finished my book. And the cloud began to lift. And I started going to bookstores again and taking pictures of covers and spines so I'd remember them later. And I started buying novels once more. But while they helped me to think of myself as a reader again, they didn't get read. Instead, they stacked on my coffee table, next to my bed, 
crowding the front page of my Kindle. As the BBC kindly pointed out recently, this was a textbook case of Tsuduku, good faith purchases that start as literature but become architecture. <laughs> I have some of that. And it turns out, though, that uh, having a Japanese term for something doesn't make it feel any better. So gaining traction again was a matter of steering into the skid. So, sometimes you, okay, sometimes I don't need challenging prose or epic scope or shifting perspectives and unreliable narr narrators. Sometimes you need a fucking yarn, which for me means crime novels. Ooh, I do like those suspense books. And my father sparked the habit by feeding me Robert B. Parker's Spencer's books when I was a kid. And I've been a junkie ever since. Patricia Cornwell's innumerable books about forensics expert Kay Scarpetti, which I've read a bunch of those, Andrew Vosh's series starring Burke, the child abuse survivor who took down creeps with extreme prejudice, and I can't remember what introduced me to Jack Reacher, but I read the first eight of the of Lee Child's books about the ex-soldier turned do-gooder in rapid succession, never caring that by the fourth one I could see their template structure like... Okay, where was I at? <laughs> I lost my place. I could see they're like so many ones and zeros on the Matrix. Then Donald Stark's Parker novels, yeah, and in 2018, the hit came courtesy of who else but Stephen King. Hmm. Reading Amazon's comments while considering an impulse by of The Outsider, I saw someone mention that it was a cousin to King's so-called Bill Hodges trilogy of detective novels. So I got the first Mr. Mercedes. And two weeks later, I devoured all three. So were they great? They were not. Did I care? Not even a little. If story is a carbohydrate of fiction, Keen makes a mean baguette. Besides, they'd given me at least a degree of mojo back. And I was back in that place where I would look forward to reading, where I'd reach for a book instead of my phone. But instead of starting to scale my Sunduko mountain, I surprised myself by going looking for one of the novels I'd abandoned during my exile. Paul Lafarge's The Night Ocean. Hmm. It's a fictional tale of a journalist who had gone missing after writing a book about H.P. H. P. Lovecraft's hidden gay affair. Now, crossing the hundredth page, the same one that had felled me more than a year before, I felt something in my chest settle. And when I got to the last page, I realized I'd found something more than a beautifully unresolved ending. I'd found a reckoning. So, I'm just going to say it. Reading is hard. Not the act, but the pursuit. There's always something else to do. Something easier, something bigger or louder, something that makes you feel better, something that makes you feel worse. But none of that changes the fact that we all want to be readers. That's why Goodreads elicits hope and inadequacy in equal measure. It's why you keep that paperback in your bag even if you haven't opened it since you bought it two months ago. And it's why putting a book down unfinished creates a little scar tissue. I couldn't do it. Yeah. Couple that with the ever-growing list of books that you want to read, and the only choice is to march grimly on. Looking back is grief. So something happened when I went back to that fallen book. I found myself appreciating not just the rest of the book, but everything that had happened since the time I'd first closed it. It was story and sacrament in one, a healing that I never expected. So instead of beginning one of the many new titles I'd amassed, I returned to the scene of the crime again. 
and this reunion with Babylon's Ashes, the sixth book in the Expanse saga of sci-fi novels, was even sweeter. Oh, I'm going to have to look and... Hmm. I do like my sci-fi as well. So, with so much life waiting in my reading list, I'm ready to leave my other ghost behind. But next time you put down a book, remember this. It's not you. It's not the book either. It's the timing. A year down the road, maybe more, that book might just be the thing that you need. Maybe you need to grow into it. Maybe it needs to grow into you. But you're not going to discover that connection if you pretend it never happened. Anything can drive you away from reading, but only a book will bring you back. I do love my books. I do have an Amazon Fire tab that I do have some Kindle books loaded onto it. And I started reading one. And it really, and I, I can't tell you the title of it. It's just a fluff murder mystery. One of those things that, you know, if I can't get to sleep at night, read that for a little bit. Or if I'm the rider in a vehicle, read that. You know, something along those lines. But, you know, just a little fluff thing. Because if I'm going to be sitting down at home and reading, I have books that I will read. And this, yeah... I am a firm believer in things happen when they're supposed to happen. And uh, you aren't if you aren't ready for something, it doesn't matter how many times you try it. It's just not going to be right. So, yeah, I understand that whole concept. So, uh... Okay. Hi, trusty feller. Looks like you guys are rambling on quite a bit. Okay, let me put this over here on this effing site too. And you know, the other thing is, you know, if everything does finally crash, you know, the internet goes down, electricity goes to shit, all this other fun stuff. If you have candles... <laughs> Or the ability to make some kind of light. And you have books. You can, well, you can learn from everything anyway. But books, I learn more about human nature by reading all kinds of books. I love to read. So, um, we'll just do, yeah, we'll do this one. And now I'll go back to my pocket and see if maybe... Nope, it still didn't show up. What are the best and worst foods? Hmm. Hmm. How about I refresh it and see if maybe it will give me... Nope. Hmm. Damn it. It's still the same ones. <sighs> And I don't think I, I don't think I clicked save. No, I did not. Shit. <laughs> damn it, damn it, damn it. And it was like a Michael Sutton blogspot kind of thing. Mm. Okay. How China is reshaping the world. How recaps change the way we watch television and Netflix every once in a while. I watch Netflix. That's about it. And Netflix is starting to piss me off as well. So I'm breaking down to DVD or YouTube. And even that's pissing me off. So what is that? I wanted a dog. I baked bread instead. Okay. That's a weird one. Um, <laughs> Scientists present new theory explaining why we're the only humans on Earth. 
Ok. Um... Hmm. I really wish I could find that damn... I should have clicked Save. Because I've scrolled all the way down to my recommended and it's not there. Not there. Damn it. You poo poo head. Let's see. I haven't had anything there. Let me see if it's on explore. No, I don't want that. <sighs> okay. How about I go with this one? I'm just really. Damn it. Makes me cranky. Er. <laughs> I know, Grim. It's like, damn it. <sighs> Stupid pocket. Stupid pocket. <laughs> There's a knit blanket sweater that I'm doing. Yeah, I tell you what, I'll share that real quick for those of you that might wish to do so. Because it is, so if nothing else, cycles will do this. I'm, I'm shrinky dinky in the pattern because I'm needing to make it for a five year old and a three year old. But yeah. That's what I keep seeing when I go back to my pocket and it's like, mmm. <laughs> oh, how funny. Sometimes I can be a real dork. And then there's other times when I'm just an imitation dork. So I guess, whatever the hell. Uh, da, da, maybe I'll see it because, nope. No, no, no. Hmm. Well. Did you know that from runwonder.com, they have an article here that says people over 40 should only work three days a week. That's according to the experts, at least. But, you know, who needs experts? Well, unless you want to back up something that you're putting forth. Hey, the experts say... Hmm. So, if you had a choice of working anything less than Monday to Friday work week, would you take it? Uh -huh. Yeah, but you know, it keeps me out of trouble. So, more than likely, your answer is yes. Absolutely. In a heartbeat. No question. Well, lucky for you, there's a telling study that you might want to cite next time you enter your boss's office to negotiate a new schedule or some time off. In 2016, economic researchers published a study in the Melbourne Institute Worker Paper series which found that for workers over 40 years old, a three-day work week could result in their best performance. Hmm. Some of you are probably hearing this and it's simply confirming what you've known for years based on your own work-life balance. But how did they arrive at the magic number three? Ha one, ha two, ha three. <laughs> That's how they did it. It's kind of like the Tootsie Pop thing. So, the Melbourne Institute of Applied Economics and Social Research at the University of Melbourne invited 3,500 women and 3,000 men in Australia to have their work habits analyzed through a series of cognitive tests. And some of these included reading words aloud, reciting lists of numbers backwards, and matching letters and numbers under time pressure. Now this was concluded that the participants working 25 hours a week performed best, while the results of those working 55 hours were even worse than unemployed participants. As noted by Professor Colin McKenzie from the Keough Institute or University, who is one of the three authors, Many countries are going to raise their retirement ages by delaying the age at which people are eligible to start receiving pension benefits. Now, okay, I got to put this out there. They are not benefits. You've already paid into that shit. They're supposed to be paying it back to you. But guess what? <laughs> they already spent it. And now they call it a benefit. Because, you know, they got a whole bunch of other hands that are out that... Well, you know, they need it where it's just a benefit for you. Yeah. 
But to go on with this, this means that more people continue to work in the later stages of their life. You know, even when they're not going to work, they're still working. Now, the degree of intellectual stimulation may depend on working hours. Work can be a double-edged sword in that it can stimulate brain activity, but at the same time, long working hours can cause fatigue and stress, which potentially damage cognitive functions. So we point out that differences in working hours are important to maintain cognitive functioning in middle-aged and elderly adults. This means that in middle and older age, working part-time could be effective in maintaining cognitive ability. Could, might, maybe, almost, kind of, sort of, possibly. You know, that sounds like a real scientific way of explaining it, doesn't it? Now, the reason that working more than 30 hours a week is detrimental for your brain, while working fewer hours is, <clears throat> excuse me, is good, is not clear. And McKenzie describes work as a double-edged sword. I just read that. The hell, did you guys write that twice? You did. So, full-time work, which is 40 hours a week, is still better than no work in terms of maintaining cognitive function. But it is not maximizing the positive effects of work. Hmm. Well, my positive effects of work was getting a paycheck so that I keep roof over my head. But you know what? I'm making do. So, it is worth noting that the results are likely to vary between countries depending on the days of people taking, um, of, that people take annually. And it's difficult to, <coughs> excuse me, damn it. <coughs> it's difficult to control which uh, all the factors which contribute to the final results of the study of this kind, including choices around the hours worked and the type of work. But this certainly makes the idea of working full-time until the age of 67 unappealing. No shit. No shit. Now, the bottom line is that working full-time is highly detrimental for the brain of those over 40. So, the government should take this into consideration and hopefully review the pension age. I think we just need to get the government completely out of it, but that's once again my personal opinion. At this point, the state pension for a person born in 1989 begins at the age of 68, which is detrimental for the employee and unproductive for the employer, which is basically going to make the employer say, well, you know, before they get to that slacker stage, we're just going to lay them off. Okay, I just threw that up. Or out. No, I didn't throw it up. I threw it out there. Okay. Go ahead and put this over here. Hi, barman. Hi, anti. Who are you going to call? Foe busters. Um, who's butt hurt? Hmm. Fake dorks. Hey. Oh, God. Trustee, you're a young feller then. You're a young whippersnapper. Okay. Let me put this over on the effing site real quick. I wonder if maybe I have it in my bookmarks. Mm. <laughs> it's still running around inside my brain. I really should have clicked on that damn link. I knew I should have clicked on that damn link. <laughs> oh, man. You know what? It's going to show up in my pocket tomorrow. <laughs> what the hell? Ain't it grand? Okay, I'll just do that. Um, okay. Nope, I don't want to go there. I clicked on one from Mines earlier today, and it's like, no, no. Really don't feel like going there. So, oh, I know. Rob Works posted this earlier today in the uh, RLM chat. 
It's from tolfa.us from the Molinari Institute, a letter to Congressman Thomas F. Bayard by Lysander Spooner. So, to Thomas F. Bayard of Delaware. I started reading it and I thought, no, I'll just, I'll, I, I'll save that for the Redidio. And I'm glad I looked across my tabs and went, oh, hey, yeah, I could do that one. So, sir, I have read your letter to Reverend Lyman Abbott in which you express the opinion that it is at least possible for a man to be a legislator under the Constitution of the United States and yet be an honest man. This, propose, or this proposition implies that you hold it to be at least possible that some 400 men should, by some process or other, become invested with the right to make laws of their own, that is, laws wholly of their own device, and therefore necessarily distinct from the law of nature, of the principles of natural justice, and that the, these laws <clears throat> excuse me, of their own making shall be really and truly obligatory upon the people of the United States and that therefore the people may rightfully be compelled to obey them. Now all this implies that you are of the opinion that the Congress of the United States, of which you are a member, has by some process or other become possessed of some right or arbitrary dominion over the people of the United States. Which right of arbitrary dominion is not given by and is therefore necessarily in conflict with the law of nature, the principles of natural justice, and the natural rights of men as individuals. All this is necessarily implied in the idea that the Congress now possesses any right whatever to make any laws whatever of its own device, that is, any laws that shall be either more, less, or other than that natural law, which it can neither make, unmake, nor alter, and cause them to be enforced upon the people of the United States, or any of them, against their will. Now you assume that the right of arbitrary dominion, that is, the right of making laws of their own device and compelling obedience to them, is a trust that has been delegated to those who now exercise that power. You call it the trust of public power. But, sir, you are mistaken in supposing that any such power has ever been delegated, or ever can be delegated, by any body to any body. Any such delegation of power is naturally impossible. For these reasons, number one, no man can delegate or give to another any right of arbitrary dominion over himself, for that would be giving himself away as a slave. And this no one can do. Any contract to do so is necessarily an absurd one and has no valid validity. To call such a contract a constitution or by any other high-sounding name does not alter its character as an absurd and void contract. Number two, no man can delegate or give to another any right of arbitrary dominion over a third person, for that would imply a right of the first person not only to make the third person his slave, but also a right to dispose of him as a slave to still another person. Any contract <clears throat> To do this is necessarily a criminal one, and therefore invalid. To call such a contract a constitution does not at all lessen its criminality or add to its validity. 
Now these facts, that no man can delegate or give away his own natural right to liberty, nor any other man's natural right to liberty, prove that he can delegate no right of arbitrary domi uh, dominion whatever, or, what is the same thing, no legislative power whatever over himself or anybody else to any man or body of men. Yes. Barely getting it? Okay, let me see. What's going on here? It could, um, huh. I'm not real sure what's going on here, Rob. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me. Let me check a few things. Because it could be, could be possibly, almost, kind of, sort of. Let me check in my Dell. No. Hmm. Huh. Because I... Mm. Nope. Don't want that. <laughs> no, that's webcam. That's tight. No, 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 no. I don't know. I'll have to see what I can... I'll have to play a little bit and see what's going on. Because I know there's... Um, my little speaker thingy disappeared. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh. Thanks, guys. Well, I just... Hmm. I will have to figure some of this shit out because something, something ain't right and I'm not talking Denmark either. Okay, that's, hmm. Get leftovers? Cool, I want leftovers. I have leftovers. Okay, back to what I was doing. I will have to figure out this sound issue because, yeah, that ain't right. That ain't right. So, where was I? Okay. Okay. Back to this Lysander Spooner letter. This impossibility of any man's delegating any legislative power, whatever, necessarily results from the fact that the law of nature has drawn the line. And that, too, a line that can never be effaced nor removed between each man's own interest and inalienable rights of person and property, and each and every other man's inherent and inalienable rights of person and property. It therefore necessarily fixes the unalterable limits within which every man may rightfully seek his own happiness in his own way, free from all responsibility to or interference by his fellow man or any of them. Now, all this pretended delegation of legislative power, that is, of a power on the part of the legislators, so called to make any laws of their own device distinct from the law of nature, is therefore an entire falsehood. A falsehood whose only purpose is to cover and hide a pure usurpation by one body of men of arbitrary dominion over other men. That this, okay, that this legislative power or power of arbitrary dominion is pure usurpation on the part of those who now exercise it and not a trust delegated to them is still further provided by the fact that the only delegation of power that is even professed or pretended to be made is made secretly, that is, by secret ballot, and not in any open and authentic manner, and therefore not by any men or body of men 
who make themselves personally responsible as principals for the acts of those to whom they profess to delegate the power. All this pretended delegation of power having been made secretly, that is, only by secret ballot, not a single one of all the legislators, so-called, who profess to be ex exercising only a delegated power, has himself any legal knowledge or can offer any legal proof as to who the particular individuals were who delegated it to him. And having no power to identify the individuals who professed to delegate the power to him, he cannot show any legal proof that anybody ever even attempted or pretended to delegate it to him. So plainly, a man who exercises any arbitrary dominion over other men and who claims to be exercising only a delegated power but cannot show his principles are nor consequently prove that he has any principles must be presumed both in law and reason to have no principles and therefore to be exercising no power but his own and having of right no such power of his own, he is, both in law and reason, a naked usurper. The king has no clothes. Sir, a secret ballot makes a secret government, and a secret government is a government by conspiracy, in which the people at large can have no rights, and that is the only government we have now. It is the government of which you are a voluntary member and supporter, and yet you claim to be an honest man. If you are an honest man, is not your honesty that of a thoughtless, ignorant man who merely drifts with the current instead of exercising any judgment of his own? For still another reason, all legislators, so-called, under the Constitution of the United States are exercising simply by arbitrary and irresponsible dominion of their own, and not any authority that has been delegated or pretended to have been delegated to them. And that reason is that the Constitution itself, Article 1, Section 6, prescribes that for any speech or debate or vote in either house, they, the senators and representatives, see now we know who they are, still shall not be questioned, held to any legal responsibility in any other place. Hmm. This provision makes the legislators constitutionally irresponsible to anybody, either to those on whom they exercise their power or to those who may have either openly or secretly attempted or pretended to delegate power to them. And men who are legally responsible to nobody for their acts cannot truly be said to be the agents of any body or to be exercising any power but their own. For all real agents are necessarily responsible both to those on whom they act and to those for whom they act. To say that the people of this country ever have bound or ever could bind themselves by any contract whatever, the Constitution or any other, to thus give away all their natural rights of property, liberty, and life into the hands of a few men, a mere conclave, and that they should make it a part of the contract itself, that these few men should be held legally irresponsible for the disposal that they should make of those rights, is an utter absurdity. It is to say that they have bound themselves and that they could bind themselves by an utterly idiotic and suicidal contract. 
If such a contract had ever been made by one private individual to another and had been signed, sealed, witnessed, acknowledged, and delivered with all possible legal formalities, no decent court on earth, certainly none in this country, would have regarded it for a moment as conveying any right or delegating any power or as having the slightest legal vali <clears throat> excuse me, validity or obligation. For all the reasons now given, and for still others that might be given, the legislative power now exercised by Congress is, in both law and reason, a purely personal, arbitrary, irresponsible, usurped dominion on the part of the legislators themselves, and not a power delegated to them by anybody. Yet under the pretense that this instrument gives them the right of an arbitrary and irresponsible dominion over the whole people of the United States, Congress has now gone on for 90 years and more filling great volumes with laws of their own device, which the people at, at large have never read, nor even seen, nor ever will read or see. And of those legal meanings, it is morally impossible that they should ever know anything. Congress has never dared to require the people even to read these laws. Had it done so, the oppression would have been an intolerable one, and the people, rather than endure it, would have either rebelled and overthrown the government, or would have fled the country. Yet these laws, which Congress has not dared to require the people even to read, it has compelled them, at the point of a bayonet, to obey. And this moral and legal and political monstrosity is the kind of government which Congress claims that the Constitution authorizes it to impose upon the people. Sir, can you say that such an arbitrary and irresponsible dominion as this over the properties, liberties, and lives of 50 millions of people or even over the property, liberty, and life of any one of those 50 millions can be justified on any reason whatever? If not, with what color of truth can you say that you yourself or anybody else can act as a legislator under the Constitution of the United States and yet be an honest man? To say that the arbitrary and irresponsible dominion that is exercised by Congress has been delegated to it by the Constitution and not solely by the secret ballots of the voters for the time being is the height of absurdity. For what is the Constitution? It is, at best, a writing that was drawn up more than 90 years ago was assented to, at the time, only by a small number of men, generally those few white male adults who had prescribed amounts of property, probably not more than 200,000 in all, or 1 in 20 of the whole population. Those men have been long since dead and they never had any right of arbitrary dominion over even their contemporaries, and they never had any over us. Their wills or wishes have no more rightful authority over us than have the wills or wishes of men who lived before the flood. They never personally signed, sealed, acknowledged, or delivered, or dared to sign, seal, acknowledge, or deliver, the instrument which they impose upon the country as law. They never, in any open or authentic manner, bound even themselves to obey it, or made themselves personally responsible for the acts of their so-called agents under it. They had no natural right to impose it, as law, upon a single human being. The whole proceeding was a pure usurpation. 
in practice, the Constitution has been an utter fraud from the beginning. Professing to have been ordained and established by we, the people of the United States, it has never been submitted to them, as individuals, for their voluntary acceptance or rejection. They have never been asked to sign, seal, acknowledge, or deliver it as their free act and deed. They have never signed, seal, acknowledged, or delivered it, or promised, or laid themselves under any kind of obligation to obey it. Very few of them have ever read or even seen it, or ever will read or see it. Of its legal meaning, if it can be said to have any, they really know nothing, and never did, nor ever will, know anything. Why is it, sir, that such an instrument as the Constitution, for which nobody has been responsible, and for which few persons have ever known anything, has been suffered to stand for the last ninety years, and to be used for such audacious and criminal purposes? It is solely because it has been sustained by the kind of conspiracy as that by which it was established. That is, by the wealth and the power of those few who were to profit by the arbitrary domin dominion it was assumed to give them over others. So while the poor, the weak, and the ignorant who were to be cheated, plundered, and enslaved by it have been told and some of them doubtless made to believe that it was a sacred instrument designed for the preservation of their rights. These cheated, plundered, and enslaved persons have been made to feel, if not to believe, that the Constitution had such miraculous powers that it could authorize the majority or even a plurality of the male adults for the time being a majority numbering at this time oh say five millions in all to exercise through their agents secretly appointed an arbitrary and irresponsible dominion over the properties liberties and lives of the whole fifty millions and that these fifty millions have no rightful alternative but to submit all their rights to this arbitrary dominion or suffer such confiscation imprisonment or death as this secretly appointed irresponsible cabal of so-called legislators should see fit to resort to for the maintenance of its power. As might have been expected, and as was, to the large degree at least, intended, this Constitution has been used from the beginning by ambitious, rapacious, and unprincipled men to enable them to maintain at the point of the bayonet, an arbitrary and irresponsible dominion over those who were too ignorant and too weak to protect themselves against the conspirators who had thus combined to deceive, plunder, and enslave them. Do you really think, sir, that such a constitution as this can avail to justify those who, like yourself, are engaged in enforcing it? Is it not plain, rather, that the members of Congress, as a legislative body, whether they are conscious of it or not, are in reality a mere cabal of swindlers, usurpers, tyrants, and robbers? Is it not plain that they are stupendous blockheads, if they imagine that they are anything else than such a cabal, or that their so-called laws impose the least obligation upon anybody. If you have never before looked at this matter in this light, I ask you to do so now, 
and in the hope to aid you in doing so candidly, and to some pur useful purpose, I'll take the liberty to mail for you a pamphlet entitled Natural Law or the Science of Justice, a treatise of natural law, natural justice, natural rights, natural liberty, natural society, showing that all legislation whatsoever is an absurdity, a usurpation, and a crime. In this pamphlet, I have endeavored to controvert distinctly the proposition that, by any possible process whatever, any man or body of men can become possessed of any right of arbitrary dominion over other men or other men's property or, consequently, any right whatever to make any law whatever of their own distinct from the law of nature and compel other men to obey it. I trust that I need not suspect you as a legislator under the Constitution and claiming to be an honest man of any desire to evade the issue presented in this pamphlet. If you shall see fit to meet it, I hope you will excuse me for suggesting that to avoid verbiage and everything indefinite, you give at least a single specimen of a law that either heretofore has been made or that you conceive it possible for legislators to make that is some law of their own device that either has been or shall be really and truly obligatory upon other persons and which such other persons have been or may be rightfully compelled to obey. If you can either find or devise any such law, I trust you will make it known that it may be examined and the question of its obligation be fairly settled in the popular mind. But if it should happen that you can neither find such a law in the existing statute books of the United States, nor in your own mind conceive of such a law as possible under the Constitution, I give you leave to find it, if that is possible, in the Constitution or statute book of any other people that now exist or ever have existed on this earth. If, finally, you shall find no such law anywhere, nor be able to conceive of any such law yourself, I take the liberty to suggest that it is your imperative duty to submit the question to your associate legislators, and, if they can give no light on the subject, that you call upon them to burn all the existing statute books of the United States, and then go home and content themselves with the exercise of only such rights and powers as nature has given to them in common with the rest of mankind. That was Lysander Spooner, May 22nd, 1882. And unfortunately, it's still very applicable today. Wow. And yeah, it is a constitution. Yep. Wow. Thank you, Rob Works, for sharing that. I'm going to plaster this bad boy all over the place. Because that's freaking awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. Thank you, Rob. You're so awesome. This is most definitely excellent brain food that I think not just people in the United States I think people everywhere need to kind of grasp this concept that nobody has the right to usurp, usurp 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 authority over you and you don't have the right to give it to someone else because then you are making yourself a slave and really I thought 
That was supposed to, you know, all of these high-minded people say that slavery was outlawed. And yet it still goes on. Huh. That was awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And now that I've done some very heavy lifting reading, <laughs> that was a little bit on the whew, tough side. But I'm going to come over here and check out the pig. I want to see what happened this date in history. I wonder if there's any way cool Lysander Spooner stuff over here. I think the boys at the pig need to read some Lysander Spooner. It might kind of change some of their perspectives at least. And I understand, you know, I was, for a long, long time, I was just convinced that the Constitution was all that and a cup of chocolate chips or whatever the hell. But <clears throat> the more I've learned, the more I've read, the more I understand, the more I realize that, wow, nope, nope. It really, really wasn't such a I mean you know there are some and it's one of those things where you know they have these wonderful little tidbits of truth and then they plaster the rest of it with false with falsehoods because we know these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal that these are unalienable they are endowed by their creator with the right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness and ownership of property. Although, it's just temporary ownership because once you're gone, it's not yours anymore. Someone else gets to play with it. But, you know, you have that little sprinkling of truth in there. That's the little cornerstone. That's that's the hook that they get you with. And then it's blah, 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 yada, 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 yada. But it's all done in such flowery and such wonderful, eloquent, flowing language. A lot of times legalese that everybody goes, yeah, yeah, what he said. I did it for a lot of years. I'll admit it. Not anymore. Not anymore. And yeah, we are all created equal as in we all you know, got put here. We all have the right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness and property. So long as, but those, those things come in order for a reason. And I know I've said this before. You know, you have the right to life. Everybody has a right to life, period. <laughs> Boom, right there. Then everybody has a right to liberty, unless, unless they have taken away someone else's right to life or their liberty endangers someone else's right to live. Everyone has a right to pursue happiness unless that happiness means that they are going to infringe upon someone else's liberty or someone else's life. Take away someone else's liberty, take away someone else's life. You do not have a right to be happy at everyone else's expense. That's pretty much the extent of yeah. And you be held responsible for your words and your deeds. I know the little whiner brigade does not wish to hear that, but that's tough patooties. So, um, let's see. Over here on the pig, in their quotable quotes, liberals have invented whole college majors, psychology, sociology, and women's studies to prove that nothing is anybody's fault. That's from P.J. O'Rourke. I also heard that Donald Trump will still skin, got to have his star removed. Big whoop de doo like you, it's the Donald. What do you expect? But who gives a shit? You know what? Outside my house in town, my girls have their names written in the concrete or in the cement, however you, whatever you want to call it. I've been told that now it's this, now it's a... In any case, my girl, my my girls have, and they have their handprints there. I have my name written in there with the date. My ex has his name written in there in the date. Here, where I'm living now, the people that that um, uh, did the new septic system and all that other fun stuff, or did the septic system that's right beside the house. It's no longer in use. They have new. But in any case, their names and the date is in the concrete there. So. BFD you know people do that all the time when they pour their own concrete they put their name 
and the date. BFD. Why do you need a damn star on the sidewalk? Shit, I could draw a star on my sidewalk if I wanted to, but why? Just makes a weak spot in the concrete. In any case, yeah, squirrel. This date in history, the 10th of August, 1776. Hey. Um, American Revolutionary War, George III's tea time royally spoiled when word of the United States Declaration of Independence reaches London. Huh. Wow, see? The universe, quinky dink, synchronicities. This date in history, the 10th of August, 1904. Dutch newspaper Volk fires gay journalist Jacob de Kock. <laughs> uh, that's, I'm just going to leave it at that. This date in history, the 10th of August, 1948. Smile! Alan Fun's Candid Camera TV debuts on ABC. Really in 48? Holy crap, I didn't realize it was that long ago. This date in history, the 10th of August, 1970. Jim Morrison's trial for lewd and lascivious behavior begins in Miami. Oh, and what Jim Morrison did was a walk in the park compared to what we got going on now. Yikes. And lastly, this date in history, the 10th of August, 1977, postal employee David Berkowitz arrested in Yonkers, New York, accused of being son of Sam, the 44 caliber killer, unknowingly inspires the term going postal. Hmm. Thank you, you piggish fellers, for that enlightening information over at PIGazette.com. Say hey to Hambo and Porkus for me. Tell them Grammy sent you. Watch them squeal. It's okay. It's all fun and games. Okay. Now, I'm going to see if I can find, hmm, in the recommended. <gasps> it changed. Yay. How musicians make money. Or don't. <laughs> oh, okay. Bloomberg.com, which I'm not going to go there because Bloomberg always tells me you have to have a do 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 do, and I'm not going to kiss my ass. But they have a title we wanted to make safer banks. We got more inequality. You think? Maybe that was the original intent. Um,. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. Ten practical answers. No, I want to go with not just a fad, but gut wrenching. This is from the Guardian. You know, I'm kind of sort of on this health kick anyway. And my dear friend Lisa B has uh, started the keto diet, so. <clears throat> I'm looking into a lot of different dietary stuff anyway. So this is from TheGuardian.com. It's not just a fad, the surprising gut-wrenching truth about gluten. So while just 1% of the UK is allergic to the proteins that cause c um, coli coliac disease or celiac disease, that's a mm, C-O-E-L-I-A-C. However you pronounce that. Many others suffer from gluten-related digestive problems, and some researchers believe that mass-produced food is to blame. Yes, it is. <coughs> Excuse me. So in the UK, 1 in 10 people now avoid gluten, and they can increasingly choose from a wide array of food products to help them do so. Last year, the free from market with gluten free as its anchor showed a 27% rise in sales. Gluten free bread, cakes, and pasta have become a staple of supermarkets in recent weeks. And Warburton's launched a range of gluten free wraps, including one made from beetroot. While Stella Artos uh, launched a gluten free beer certified by the, yeah, that Cialic or, is that colic? 
<laughs> I have no idea. Um, it's a lucrative, uh, oh, and there is a lucrative cookbook sector. There are gluten-free offerings by everyone from Ella Woodward uh, to Novak. I'm not even going to do that last name. Too many consonants in a row. But with a tennis star crediting the diet with turning his health around. And he's not alone in believing a gluten-free diet is healthier. 15% of British households prefer not to put foods with gluten and wheat in their shopping basket. More than half of them on health grounds. Yet as surely as the popularity of gluten-free eating has grown, skepticism of the it's all in the mind sort of um, has matched it. So, huh. It, okay, some of it is in the mind, but yeah. I know people that have issues with gluten, and yeah, it's not pretty. Bless their hearts, it's not pretty. So, the only non-contentious fact is that people diagnosed with this disease, which is just 1% of the UK population, I'm just going to call it colic, just because, yeah, that works, um, and indisputably suffer from a very rare autoimmune disorder where eating gluten, the umbrella term for various gluey proteins found in wheat, barley, and rye, causes damage to the small intestine, which, see, the intestine... Oh, celiac. Thank you, Frumpy. Celiac. <laughs> I wondered if maybe. Looks like colic to me, though. Oh, well. Celiac. Thank you, guys, for correcting me. Now I'll still stumble over it. You know I will. <laughs> okay. To carry on with this, the battle commences when we consider the far larger number of people variously estimated at between 6% and 8% of the population who self-select a gluten-free diet and who are now classed as having non sialic gluten sensitivity. Now, I just as a quick aside, when I was in town earlier today, I was reading labels. <laughs> And I was reading on the Campbell's Campbell Soup. And it said that it does contain some corn and soy and, you know, various other um, no-nos for me. I just don't want to go there kind of thing. And at the very bottom of it, it had a little label. Or at the very bottom of the label, it had a little box on the label that said it's certified that all corn, soy, and whatever are not GMO products. And it was like, oh, uh, there is a difference being made. And see, you do not have to legislate this shit. All you have to do is vote with your pocketbook. You let them know, and they will have to start paying attention or they'll start losing money. So, back to this article. Even though they are not celiacs, they report similar unpleasant symptoms such as diarrhea, wind, constipation, stomach pain, cramping, bloating, fatigue, and find that these are alleviated when they cut out the gluten. There are also other plants that you can do that will help you and vitamins and supplements. Actually, a balanced diet um, that will help you help your intestinal system get past that. Now, celiac disease has an ancient lineage, its earliest description dating back to the first century physician uh, Aratus of Cappadocia, okay, who named it after the Greek um, Kiliakos, which is abdominal, and yet non-celiac gluten sensitivity appears to be a modern condition. While the notion that some forms of gluten could be a potential source of digestive difficulties, growing numbers of people reporting suffering from circulate or report suffering has circulated in contemp yeah, contemporary medicine circles for decades. And the gluten avoidance ten, um, trend has really taken off in the past decade. 
So when Miley Cyrus, big whoop de doo went public about her gluten allergy, okay, number one, this was explained to me by a doctor. If you have an allergic reaction to something, that means that whatever it is can cause life-threatening difficulties. That is what allergy means. Other than that, if it just causes you discomfort or gives you hives, it is called a sensitivity or a reaction. It is not an allergy. They are very specific about this shit in the medical terminology, so got to be careful here. In any case, it was in 2012 that she did this, and in 2013, Gwyneth Paltrow published a gluten-free recipe book. So, it is noticeable that gluten sensitivity seems to preoccupy women more than men, which instantly locates it in the gender territory where it can be dismissed, like a Victorian diagnosis of hysteria or, oh, she's got the vapors. Mm-hmm. And as an imaginary malady of attention-seeking, fashion-conscious, mainly younger women. Statistically, women are more likely than men to be gluten-sensitive. And two to three times as many women as men suffer from celiac disease. And that's going up to six times more for non-celiac gluten sensitivity. Now, gluten-free diets yield mixed results. One woman I spoke to who described her symptoms as her stomach blowing up like a balloon gave me this verdict on her experiment. I lived above a baker in Paris and three months of gluten-free torture and denial, but it didn't work. But others do see a benefit. And in one recent study, researchers concluded that participants' reasons for gluten avoidance in the absence of medical diagnosis of celiac disease were, for the most part, reasoned and logical. And the vast majority of participants believing that adhering to a gluten-free diet led to improvements. So even so, we're still encouraged to file a non-celiac gluten-free regime in the dustbin of baseless celebrity fad diets or to write it off as a 21st century's exercise in mass neurosis. After all, why should grains that we have been eating apparently without incident for as long as 4,000 years suddenly become too hard for our stomach? Oh, I can answer that question real quick. It's because you didn't have Roundup for 14,000 years. And it is a practice of a lot of wheat farmers that two weeks prior to harvest, they treat their field with Roundup because it will knock down the weeds so they have less um, foreign material when they go in to uh, take their, their harvest to the gr grain elevator and it dries the wheat down faster. It desiccates it. But what people don't realize is that Roundup stays on that grain because that grain does not get washed. And in two weeks time, that's a lot of time for that to get into the actual kernel itself. That, I believe, is part of the issue with a lot of people nowadays. So, they go on to say, maybe we need to rephrase the question. What is it about the grain-based staples most of us are eating that could be causing population-wide digestive difficulties? Or, as the Real Bread Campaign co-founder Andrew Whiteley says, why, uh, we should be asking why the food system has done this to us and asking how it dares to sell us crap that's made us like this. Well, because it's more lucrative for them. So, what does it mean? Well, for a start, the wheat we are eating has been bred largely at the behest of industrial bakeries and food manufacturers to have higher levels of stronger gluten. The more gluten, the fluffier and more vol voluminous your loaf. In the UK, the oldest modern bred wheat cultivator that we uh, grow is Maris Widgeon, which dates back to 1964, and the rest were developed in the late 20th century. Okay, 
and the early 21st century for higher yield and higher gluten. These cultivators are not what our ancestors ate. What other unintended uh, mutations might this breeding have caused in these varieties? And what effects might they have on the people who eat them? Well, I'm going to have to let you guys read that for yourself because I am just about out of time. So, thank you all for listening to this Freaker Friday edition of Grammy's Rocket Chair. Be sure to stick around because later on this evening will be Grimner and Moose Girl with the Freaker's Ball. Is there going to be a dork table tomorrow? Inquiring minds would like to know. Silly ass disease. Yeah, well, there's some people that have that too. Um, in any case, and let's see, and then Sunday at noon Eastern time, Grimmy's going to be popping on the radio and there's going to be a rousing game of trivia going on in the RLM chat room as Grimmy plays the blues and he's going to lead you into Hal Anthony, who's going to open up a can of whoop ass on yo ass behind the woodshed. I will be back on Wednesday for the Wednesday edition of the rocket chair. But until then, I hope y'all have an absolutely amazing weekend. For those of you that it actually is a weekend, I know some people, you have your weekend during the middle of the week, and that's kosher, that's cool. You know, that way you can get some shit done that you need to get done while businesses are open or whatever the hell. And, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to go out and play in my garden a little bit more because I do have just a little bit more I need to get tended to. So... Once again, have an awesome evening. Hopefully, I will catch up with you later at the Freaker's Ball if I'm still awake. <laughs> oh, and Grimmy says that there will be a dork table tomorrow. So tomorrow at noon Eastern Time, the dork table here on the RLM. So y'all have an awesome evening. I will catch you in the funny papers. But until then, please remember, I really do love you all honest and for true and I wish you all enough good night <laughs>